Hi, this is Tim McDonald, and I am one of the co-founders of the Connected Educator Appreciation Day and the former director of community for the Huffington Post. And we are here today really to share some tips, some ideas, and suggestions on why making responsible and respectful interactions is so important. And we all share this belief and come together because it really allows us to help us not only learn and grow by expanding our knowledge through our relationships and connections with other people in different places around the world, but also from a standpoint of it really helps us be able to help ourselves by knowing more people and getting to understand what they know that we can kind of transfer to ourselves and become better human beings. And this whole concept of responsible and respectful is so important because when you are not responsible, you can really find yourself in some dangerous or potentially harming situations. When you are disrespectful, you can find yourself putting a wedge and dividing yourself from another person and getting in confrontations. And I've had this actually happen in my experience online, you know, where you don't know who that person is going to be and who they have kind of in their following they can almost gang up on you and bully you. And so what I always suggest in every situation that we have online is that we try and find ways to be as responsible and respectful as we possibly can in every interaction that we make, whether we think other people are listening in, whether we're directing a message at them or not, that's not the important thing. The important thing is to understand that anything we do online can and possibly will be seen by somebody that might not understand the context of what we talked about. And so when we, when we reach out, it's so important that we are responsible and respectful. I hope you enjoy everything that we have to share here today. And if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. All of us are more than willing to help you, to speak with you, to answer any questions you might have. Hello, my name is Michael Sinclair, and I am an educator now for about 20 years. I've worked with young learners, I work with adults, I work with everyone in between as well, and with companies dealing with education and their programs. Now, it might be that you as a teacher, I know I as a teacher, might have a greater subject knowledge than the students with whom I'm working, but that's not, that doesn't give me the authority to speak all the time. When beginning relationships with new learners and across the course of a year working with them, what I tend to do is ask questions first. When I give my ideas, it generally has students take them on board and write. If I choose not to do that first of all, it allows them to get their ideas out first so that they can be discussed. There's no one person saying, this is the way it is. Listen to that and take it on board. Rather, it's a question of, what do you think? Where would you like to go with this thoughts or what do you know? And when that question comes out of what do you know, it really informs my planning and the sequence of learning that we use in the classroom. When I look at some of the younger learners I work with these days, depending upon, I guess, your, your ability within teaching, perhaps with technology, perhaps with the books you've read, perhaps with science texts you've had to go with, or even films you've seen. Different children have different experiences and different levels of knowledge. I think it is very conceited and very arrogant of us as teachers to assume that we know far more than they do. Now, it may well be true that we as adults do know more than they do and, and can explain it better. But it could be that the way that students know or that the learning that they have had is different than what we have. So they might have a different perspective. They might have used a different tool, a different strategy they've applied. It isn't wrong if it works for them. It's really important, I think, that we watch and listen and question rather than telling this is not the way it's done. 
that's the wrong way to go. By telling them that, it puts them down, it belittles them. If you're trying to encourage response, responsibility and respect in the classroom, it goes to you too. So I would say to you as an educator, listen, and then share your ideas. Hello everyone, my name is Vladka Butkovic. I'm the Program Director at Butkovic Education Center situated in Zagreb, Croatia. Uh, through the programs that we offer to all age groups, we encounter specific challenges in our work with teenagers. Uh, kids at that age think that they know more about social networking than we as teachers do. They are unaware that the networking they do is mostly uh, there for fun. So what can be done? Because they are reluctant to get exposed when serious work has to be done. First of all, as a teacher, embrace the skills they have developed. Keep in mind they do need guidance in nonverbal communication. That means practice with them before they stand in front of the camera, then practice with them with the camera on, let them be critical, provide feedback. We're talking about positive criticism, of course, but let them and teach them how to provide uh, feedback to one another. Introduce useful tools that they can use to create new content. They are prone to sharing already existing content. Uh, they don't even check the background of, that, of the content they are sharing. So teach them how to create podcasts, blogs, web pages and videos require from them to get creative and help them get deeply involved in the topics. So you basically cover two things as a teacher at the same time. They deal with the topic and they are mastering a new tool that will help them later in, uh, you know, when they have to use their skills and their knowledge out of the school. Teach them the essential step in building relationships. They are, they are unaware that before you ask for something, you have to offer something you already know. So share your know-how to the audience. Uh, they think it's bragging. Teach them that it's not. Teach them that it's very, very okay to show what you already know. They are the best teachers uh, to their peers. So teach them how to share without being too assertive in it. It is a long road, it is achievable. In Croatia it is challenging because children are not used uh, to that kind of learning, especially in public schools, but we see that they are hungry of that kind of teaching and that kind of learning. They are not aware of the impact they can make by carefully creating a content and sharing it wisely. That all leads to building relationships because just as in real life, and uh, not online life, but face-to-face -face, uh, relationships, it is all about getting to know one another. What is the role of the teacher once they have mastered those tools? Lead by your own example. Get out there, connect your classroom, let them see you as a global citizen and show them that it is just that easy. Thank you. Hi, my name is Cassie Reeder. I'm a former elementary school teacher a former education consultant, and now I am an online instructor with Real World Training. Outside of my day job, for the past seven years, it has been my passion and my desire to connect with people virtually, such as through Twitter and Voxer and Periscope and Facebook. And that's actually how I met many of you that are watching this video today who know who I am, as well as the amazing creators of this DigiSit Summit. Outside of my many day jobs that I've had in the past seven years, one thing has been consistent and that has been my goal of connecting with other people virtually. And I found that it's very interesting whenever you never met someone face to face and you want to build a relationship with them as a professional learning um, collaboration. But as I said, you've never met them face to face. So today I'm going to talk a little bit about what's like and how to build global collaboration networks or PLNs as most people call them professional learning networks. In order to start building connections with people, it's really important that you listen to them. Take some time to ask questions. I tried that out this year and it's been really great. Not only is that giving you a chance to step back and listen, but it's also giving them a chance to feel proud about what they know and be able to share it with you. We all love to talk about, you know, the things that we're talented at, 
um, share with other people things that we're skilled at. So you're giving them that opportunity to feel that they know something and then they can empower others with that knowledge. Take an opportunity to listen to people people's podcasts or um, look at PDFs or resources that they're sharing and look at the content that's being shared by the creator or by people who are retweeting or sharing on Facebook and then ask them questions so that they know you're looking and you're listening and you're paying attention to them. That is more valuable than any other advice or any other tips that I could give you is to be a good listener and to take um, take a notice in what they're sharing and the things that they're talking about and ask questions. It'll be a huge game changer if you haven't been doing this before.